Hi, uh, I'm Mark. It's the 1st of January in 2018, and this is Mark's Cloud Witness Bible Study. I don't claim to be a saint, uh, not even a prophet, although most prophets, I think, in their day were indistinguishable from assholes. It's uh, life that has been strange, and I saw the sign of the sun in the clouds. Some people say I'm crazy. Okay, that's your business. But I did read the Bible at one point and found it edifying. Whether you come to believe, I think the Bible is a piece of history that is important to read for understanding the world as it is. And the world how it could have been had these words not had such a profound impact on history in very many negative ways yes there's a lot of darkness in the bible and that's human darkness there's also something that shines through all that that progressively gets be better and brighter pointing the way toward a different way of looking at the world the profoundly different way of looking at the world that makes it possible to stop fighting back. And that's where, you know, the Roman Empire had math, had a lot of technology, had roads, um, systematic mastery of horses, steel, um, had they not fallen apart in the third century, which was in large part due to Christianity and also other factors. Um, mainly though, I think Christianity pointing out how the state religion of Rome didn't make any sense. Um, but had that not happened, Rome would have conquered Persia, gaining advanced math, and then India uh, gaining the number zero, and China gaining gunpowder. And had those things happened, it would have only been a matter of a few hundred years before the militarized Rome with no ethics and no consistent logic or um, kindness would have developed nuclear weapons and had they done that in the first millennium we would not be here today nothing would be here the world would be a radioactive cinder block just burning through space forever with no life for millions more years but somehow things changed things changed from the path that the world was on because people started thinking differently. People started thinking about themselves and their place in the universe and the scope of the universe and how humbling that is to look at everything and think, wow, I don't even conceive of how I could be important in all this, and yet, at the same time, I am important. And I have purpose and meaning in my life, and a lot of the best meaning in my life comes from acts of kindness. And I think that that's where the Bible tells its main story from the beginning, an act of kindness in creation towards the end, an act of kindness in redemption. And no matter where you are in life, no matter what sins you committed or continue to commit, you can come back to yourself and the self that was given to you as a child with that spirit of being able to be nice to other people for the sake of just being nice. And that's the central message, I think, that comes through all of it. So, 
yeah, I mean, I continue. I, you know, I've got sins on my under my belt that I have no idea how they happened, and uh, I just I can't even conceive of how I could have been that person. Um, thank God for God for bringing me back through several acts of direct intervention. And I continue to have sins, you know. I occasionally say the unkind word. I've got some vanity going on. I put Rogaine in my hair just this morning, you know. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> but I think through it all, it's the same message of the Bible is that we are going somewhere and we're becoming something new and unusual in the universe, certainly unusual in the history of life on the planet. Uh, and going somewhere else, definitely, that may be stranger than we can imagine. And also, at the same time, the Bible tells that the rules of the world as we perceive them, these generalized physical laws, these things that happen every day, the notions that we learn based on our experience, are not the end of the story. That there's a more profound world beyond this one, perhaps one could say, coexisting with this one, that is a place where the rules of entropy do not apply, um, where mind uh, takes precedence over matter, and where we can live as we are continually, and even come back here sometimes. I mean, who would know, right? Nobody would believe you. And that's fascinating to me as a layman fan of physics and whatnot um, and philosophy. It's a really profound idea to put one's head around. And most people, I think, who approach Christianity see church and religion and things like that as a set of words that you say to get the goodies, to get people to approve of you, to get your place in a little hierarchy of little people running around in some little building somewhere, and that's bullshit. It's such bullshit. And even Jesus says, that's bullshit, you guys. Stop it. And nobody listened to the man. <laughs> and <laughs> I just think that's funny. I think it's funny. And having seen you know, something that nobody would believe, nobody would come out of their house to witness it with me because it was the middle of the night and they were scared of the knock of a thief in the night, I guess. I, I just, I look at the world now and I think, hmm, okay, well, thank you, Lord, for putting me in this strange and frequently painful life to witness the transformation of reality and the transformation of humankind. And I'm pleased to uh, start this endeavor of trying to get through the Bible. Um, I have a New International Version Zondervan Study Bible, uh, which I will be reading one little bit at a time and then commenting on. And you can take my commentary and say that I'm some kind of bad person if you want to. Maybe you're right. I don't know. Whatever. It's a free world. I'm just going to read the book and talk about it. So, God bless. Thanks.